One of the most loaded rooms for the Detroit Lions is the wide receiver position. It's competition. He has TJ Hawkinson. He has Quintez Cephas. Mm -hmm. He has Khalif Raymond. He has Amon Ross St. Brown, DJ Chark, and eventually Jameson Williams. So what can the second-year kid like Amon Ross St. Brown expect now? Because now he's not a secret. Let's face it. It ain't going to be so easy for him this time. I brought up the secret wide the secret receiver. secret wide receiver. One of the most loaded rooms for the Detroit Lions is the wide receiver position. Shout out to my man T. Uncle Foss T. in the building. Uncle T in the T. building. T. Foss. But you look at the wide receiver room. You look at they draft Jamison Williams, who you know won't be available for the beginning of training camp, which is yeah. good. We want it to be that way. You have Amon Ron St. Brown. You saw he played Jeff at the end of last year. You bring in DJ Chark who I'm hearing nothing but great things about. I'm hearing his speed, his ability to drop on a dime, plant. Khalif Raymond, another slot guy that we mm. have last year, made some plays. But what about this guy, Quintez Cephas, wide receiver who actually was the go-to guy at the start of the season last year, wide receiver out of Wisconsin. I guess I'm not the only one that likes him. Dan Campbell seems to like him as well. You know, he's doing what, what we asked him to do. And, uh, and, and last year, it was kind of like, put him in a competitive environment, all of a sudden he shows up. And uh, that's when you really feel him. And yesterday we get in one of those competitive environments and who shows up, he showed up again. So uh, we don't ignore those things. I don't ignore them, you know. So that was good to see out of him. You know what I like too? He's wearing a real wide receiver number. Yeah. Number 87. <laughs> A real I wide you receiver number. That, Maz. Okay. So, so you talking stuff? I wore seventeen. It's I don't not care. A I like a. I like in the eighties. Give me numbers in the eighties. Well, well, Maz, I wish I can go over and do it all over again just for you. I would have chose. I would have chose eighty like my first number in Michigan. But I like this by Dan Campbell, and I like Quintez Cephas. Last year, you saw him. He was the go-to guy for the uh, for the Lions for the most part of what the first six games of the season before yeah. he got injured. Now just look at that room, and you know what it means. What does it mean to a guy like Jared Goff, Jeff, to look in that, took a look around. He has TJ Hawkinson. He has Quintez Cephas. Mm -hmm. He has Khalif Raymond. He has Amar Ron St. Brown, DJ Chark, and eventually Jameson Williams. What does that do for a guy that also has one of the best lines in the NFL? Trust. And I think that was a big thing last year he didn't have with these receivers, number one, because they were in and out of the lineup. But you saw Quintez last year show flashes. But what I'm excited for with this wide receiver room is the competition. That yes. these guys last year, Khalif could play, Quintez could play. Now, if you ain't producing, you're not playing because DJ Chark, you mentioned Jameson Josh Williams. Josh Reynolds, another guy. Josh Reynolds, the yeah. guy that they brought back. So that's what I'm most excited about the competition. I think Quintez will find his way in the lineup, man. He's a he's a scrapper. Hey, we forgot about Kadaryl Hodge. Isn't he still on the team? Trinity Tr Benson. Yeah, don't forget Trinity Benson. <laughs> that's Trinity this Benson. Is pick for him, didn't we? <laughs> he only got scratched what ten out of twelve games or something like that. Mm, nah, I guess anyway, he's lighting up camp. Hey, <laughs> but yeah, yes, Vince, that's true. You hit the nail on the head, and, and it's it's competition. Like, it's competition. Like, it's great when you have competition. I think it's also great when you have competition when there's no clear-cut guy. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, you can say I'm on Ron St. Brown because of how he came on and he had the better year last year. But you can easily look at Quintez Cephas was the guy for Jared Goff early in the year. You can look at DJ Chark as being the guy that they paid to come in. He's 6'3". He runs 4'3". And then you look at Jamison Williams. You look at a guy that they drafted. They moved yeah. up 20 slots to get. Then you look at Josh Reynolds, who's the guy that Jared Goff has known the longest. And he's helped the team. That's where you create that competition. You got guys that are trying to work and get in there and be the guy. It, it does nothing but breed the best players. So what play. can the second-year kid like Amon Ross St. Brown expect now? Because now he's not a secret. Right. So what, what, does he, what does he have to do now? Because, let's face it, it ain't going to be so easy for him this time. See, now is when you take your knowledge of the game up to the next level. See, in the first year, you're just going out there and you're plug and play. Like, literally, Jared Goff is going out there and tell you, hey, go over here and run this route. Go over here and run this route. And eventually, you know, you're starting to learn it. But you guys are still behind the eight ball in terms of talent, in terms of talent around you. So you're just really trying to learn your spot. Right. You want to know the Z position. I want to know what the Z does. That's all I'm focusing on because that's all I have time to because it's 17 games and it's, it's rapid fire. Now that he has offseason, he's learned his position. He's learned the position that he knows that he plays. Now it's time to learn the concept. Yesterday when we were talking about what makes Cooper Cup so dangerous, what makes him worth the money that he got, it's the cerebral assassin part of the game that Jeff just alluded to by tapping the skull. He's a cerebral assassin. He knows the concept. He knows what is expected. He knows the line slides. He knows the blitzes on the other side. See, now in his second year, now is when you take your game up a notch in terms of the mental aspect and the mental way you approach the game, Jeff.
Yeah, you hit it right on the head, I think. I mean, Maz, you can speak to it as well. With, yeah. with having TJ Augustin back I, I, and these weapons, more weapons, yes, towards the end of last season, they knew Amon Ross St. Brown was the guy. He still got his. And now you're going to have more talent surrounding him. Hopefully, that's going to be more beneficial for him as well. I want to, ask, I want to show you guys something that I uh, came across yesterday. A lot, Detroit Lions social media team does a great job, by the way. They're as good as uh, HBO when they do. They're funny. When they yeah. do their stuff. When HBO does their hard knocks. ESP, they got nothing on the Detroit Lions. Mm, not Detroit Lions they do their they're... inside the den, they call it. This is from draft night. This is when Brad Holmes was chatting around and talking to Minnesota and trying to make a deal to get Jamison Williams over here. In case you missed it, folks, this is how draft night went down in the Detroit Lions war room. This is my Hey, we're all good now? All right, let's do it. Uh, hey, man, I really appreciate it, man. Right. Appreciate it. Right. You're good? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's what the hell I'm talking about right see there. See that? Did you, do you see the energy in that room? Yeah. I got goosebumps, man. I, how do you not? How do you not? How do you not? The energy in that room was electric. That doesn't happen if the Saints don't jump and get Olave. It doesn't happen. You're right. That deal. So now, Maz, you as a person that, that has been very vocal as it relates to drafting guys that are injured yeah. or coming off injury, like now when you see everybody in that room like that excited about getting Jamison Williams and now they're protecting him the right way, does it make you a little more cause for ease or are you still optimistic? Listen, optimism is the wrong, I, wrong word. I want it to nervous. work out. All right. I don't no. like drafting players that have injuries. And then they come back in the next round and they get Pascal. And now he's hurt again. Yeah. Right. And he was hurt before in college, then hurt at the bowl game, and now hurt in OTAs. It doesn't give me a good feeling that they drafted back to back players. And then a few rounds later, they get the tight end from Vatek that has got the ACL. Retired. As well. No, no. This was before. This is this is that's the undrafted guy. Oh yeah, I'm the okay. tight end from Vatek yeah, right, that's right, right, got right. the injury. So they drafted three guys with injuries. I want them to work. Yeah. Am I nervous? Yeah, I'm a Lions fan. I look at it this way. I mean, you know, hey, Henry Ford Health System is supposed to be the best health system in the world. So I think <laughs> we're bringing hey, them in. Take we're care bring, of them, boys. Exactly. I went we're, there we're the other day it. for my migraines. Exactly. I hope it works. You went to the one I was born at. There West you go. Grand Boulevard I was there. The freeway. I was on 11th floor there, baby. One, two, three, four a.m. 2000. Well, not Look 2000, 1983. I, I was, was 2000. 2000. I got you. I got you in the 2000. But that, how job. cool was that video? It was great to see, man. It gave us some some insights, some behind closed doors, and also it can show you for the people that were. Why did they move up 20 spots for a wide receiver? Why did they move up 20 spots for a wide receiver that was hurt? You see that energy in a group like that that is in charge with the team's future, all that money. You got to be pretty excited watching how excited they were. Though. Yeah, they got goosebumps. their guy. They, they found their guy and they wanted to go get him.